Yo! What up guys and welcome back to another one. But we are doing our chores this morning. Fred here! There you go dude, there's breakfast. You ready to eat buddy? Are you ready to eat buddy? Yeah? Oh yeah, that's that good stuff isn't it boy? Y'all have been requesting some more Fred videos, and believe you me, here next week we're going to be coming at y'all with a lot of new Fred vidges. But this video has been requested so much, I did this video last season, but I decided, you know what, for a Foul Friday video, this will be perfect today. And it's the age-old question, Bobby, how do you get permission on all of the private fields that you duck and goose hunt? Um, if I would have known what I know now, back then, back five, back ten, twelve years ago, I would have been getting on a lot better ground. I would have had a lot better hunts back then. It's all about what you know and how confident you are. But it's also about who you know. And uh, that has progressed a lot, as I'm sure you guys can guess, in the last few years. But before we really get in deep in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what we're doing today. I'm actually getting on the road early today. It's right at eight o'clock. Gonna go scout some pigeons today. So we're gonna be scouting pigeons and talking about how to get permission from farmers because it is literally an age old question. A lot of you out there, a lot of people in general, think that you have to be somebody uh, to get permission, that you have to have a name, uh, let's say like a guide or something like that, or you just have to be literally best friends with the farmer. Well, I'm here to tell you guys that that is not, that is not the case. Like earlier when I said, uh, it's all about who you know. Uh, first off and, and foremost, it's all about who you know. So um, knowing somebody that knows a farmer always helps. Um, but guys, Farmers are not robots. Farmers are not bad people. Not I have I have yet uh, to to meet a bad farmer. So just stick that up in the memory bank and just remember it, guys. The word farmer and talking to farmers it can be it can be intimidating, guys. I know I've been there. There's still some farmers to this day that I call for permission, and I maybe I've just never talked to them, never met them, so I don't really know what type of person they are or something, and I still will get a little nervous. Now, it's just basically silly me just being silly me. I mean, there's no reason, no reason to be nervous. The worst, guys, 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 remember the absolute worst that that farmer can do to you is tell you no. That's it. You're not burning your name. You're not, uh, you know, scarring your name with the farmer just because he told you no. Guys, it is very common for farmers to say no. It's just something we all have to deal with as waterfowl hunters, you know? Getting a no is, uh, I mean, if you're not in your area, let's say you're in a complete new area, maybe out of your own state, and they see your tag, and they're like, man, he's out of state, I don't like that. It's probably gonna be about a 50-50, uh, you getting permission. So 50-50, you know, yes to no's. Um, now if you're local, and they see your tag, and you tell them you're local, hey, we're just buddy hunting, and you're not a guide, as long as you're nice, considerate, very considerate. You have to be considerate to farmers. It's their property. You are asking to enter onto their property that, that creates their livelihood, that pays the bills, that feeds the mouths. So being considerate is the most important thing I can tell you right now. But guys, being considerate goes a long ways. I will tell you right now, um, like I said, I've never really met, there, maybe a couple. I would say 95% of farmers are very, very, very considerate people. They're nice people, they're friendly people. They wanna make more relationships. That's something big about a farmer is if you have something to offer a farmer, let's say uh, you're not a guide. There's a big difference between being a guide and being a normal person hunting. Uh, you know how guides, they make their money in the field. Um, they make money directly off the land that they're hunting uh, through clients. And, and, and that's something, if you're guiding, that's a whole nother video. That is, uh, honestly, the tips on that, um, that, that is literally a whole nother video. God, we got mosquitoes everywhere. Yesterday, me and uh, Jordan went sparrow hunting and we got eight up, eight up. 
it, it's a lot easier getting permission right now during the summer rather than in the armpit of the season. Because in the armpit of the season, guys, uh, you can only imagine a farmer uh, who has waterfowl and geese and ducks on their land a bunch. You can imagine how many calls they get, maybe a day, maybe every two days. But every week, they're getting calls and they're getting annoyed. So, here's a few tips that I use uh, that can make you less annoying to a farmer because essentially that is the biggest tip that I can give you is do not be annoying to the farmer. If you're annoying right off the bat on the phone or through text, they're going to tell you no and they're probably never going to let you hunt. So first impression guys, first impression is everything with a farmer. I'm not kidding. I mean, first impression should always be most important in any new relationship, right? I know, sounding like a psychiatrist out here right now. But in this relationship, the farmer expects uh, not only appreciation, but respect. He, he expects the respect factor, you know what I mean? And it's not only respecting him, not leaving ruts in his field from your tires. If it's too wet, you better walk stuff in. Things like that that go a long ways. Um, one thing I do, guys, is show my appreciation through the off season by sending some of the farmers, you know, some new Ducks t-shirts, or I might go get them a case of their favorite beverage and leave it on their porch. There's a couple things that you can do. And I know those things are like, it's just like, okay, those are like brainless ideas. And, and a lot of you are probably like, okay, Bobby, yeah, whatever. Like, how many, how many cases of beer do they get every season? They might get a few. But if you're one of them that actually gives it to them, guys, they're normal people like me and you. Wouldn't you like to show up uh, to your house and your favorite case of beverage is just sitting on your porch with a little note on top of it? Like, how nice is that? I mean, honestly, you can make or break uh, your name with the farmer just by simple gestures like that. So that is my tip number one, being considerate, showing your respect, is huge to a farmer, guys. Good morning, thank you for choosing McDonald's. How can I help you? Yeah, I'll take a number three with a large Dr. Pepper, and that'll be it. One bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, no, the Dr. Pepper, side 21, first one, no, thank you. Thank you. Always say your thank you to a farmer. Always say your thank you to anybody. Show your respect. You know what I mean? Respect is the main thing, it's the main ingredient. What up? It's the main ingredient to everything in life. Show respect, man. So tip number two, guys, it's along the same lines as uh, being courteous and showing respect is uh, the first or second time you talk to the farmer and, and you know, when he gives you your permission, when you're on the phone with him, what you need to say is, hey, sir, I was just curious. Uh, would it be better for me to contact you through text or call? So either a phone call or a text, and if he's like, hey man, you can just shoot me a text, that automatically tells you that he's a busy guy and he just wants to be text instead of called. Um, and now what I do in those situations, those situations are always the best because I would rather text somebody than go through a call if they're okay with that. <clears throat> a lot of people are like that and especially farmers because again, farmers are busy people. Sometimes they have cattle to take care of as well as the pivots and the crops, you know what I mean? So there's a lot going on in a farmer's life. Being providing and caring about the farmer and his time is very important. It's again showing respect. So a lot of times what I do with the farmers that I text is uh, I'll find, you know, let's say we're here, we find a feed of birds and I go to my Onyx maps on my phone and I drop a pen and I screenshot it and I'll usually just send them that screenshot as a photo and I'll go, hey John, uh, there's a bunch of geese on this field, uh, about a thousand of them. Uh, so it basically shows them. Always leave an intersection in the screenshot so it shows them right where it's at unless the uh, field is actually named. <clears throat> but a lot of times that's how it goes. I'll send them that and a lot of times they go, hey, good to go. You know, good to go for in the morning. You know, you know what I mean? So another thing is if you ask permission, you're usually going to be asking permission for that next day or that day. So make it very clear when you talk or text to the farmer, make it very clear. This is the day or days that I'm wanting to hunt it. So you get it locked down for the days that you're wanting to be there. Because there's been a lot of times that I've called and asked 
permission uh, for the next day and I didn't clarify that. And so when I go out there and, and hunted, this was years back, this was me learning, you know? Uh, so when I went out there and hunted the next day, the farmer calls me and says, hey Bob, I thought you were, you were only hunting that yesterday. And I'm like, oh, no, we didn't hunt it yesterday. I was talking about today. So just be clear with the farmer. Uh, make sure when you get off the phone and make sure before you hunt, everything is in the open, everything is clear. Uh, because there's all kinds of stuff, just like with how many people you have. There's a lot of farmers that don't like a lot of people on the hunt. Now, I, I understand that, but that's something we have to, uh, we have to pay attention to. And uh, we have to make sure if we have seven people out there, hey, are you, are you okay with seven of us being out there? If you're going to have 20 out there, you better tell him, hey, is it okay if 20 of us are out there? I made a mistake this past season not doing that, and it kind of bit me in the butt. So, whatever I learn, I'm going to pass on to you guys. Uh, oh, man. Just got done chowing down the McDonald's. Oh, Starling. Uh, but we're still out here scouting pigeons and honestly guys real quick if you guys are liking the video you Gotta hit that thumbs up and that will let me know that you guys like these these types of foul Friday videos A lot of you guys have been wanting my tips on how to get permission That's one of the main things to hunting private ground for waterfowl or deer or, or turkey anything pigeons um, Is is having the confidence to get the deal done uh, with the farmer and so that leads us to number three my my third tip and it's kind of it kind of bundles and wraps everything into one uh so we went through uh respect and courtesy is kind of the first deal and then the second deal is being in contact with that farmer uh how he feels necessary you know basically you're gonna be a caterer to that farmer uh i'm not these are not tips and tricks that are any different than what we normally do in life. Farmers are normal people, very, very, very normal people that want to be treated like a normal person but with utmost respect. So, number three is uh, before you get a hold of that farmer, before you talk to him, have a game plan. Know what you're gonna say, know how you're gonna talk, know what you're gonna tell him to make him feel comfortable. So, a lot of times what I do when I meet a farmer for the first time, I'll automatically tell him, hi, my name's Bobby Guy. Uh, I like to waterfowl hunt, a big group of us waterfowl hunt. I have a YouTube channel that I film and blah, blah, blah. And uh, just wanna let you know I'm not a guide. And that's, that's something that I say a lot because in my area, guiding is a big deal. And uh, a lot of the farmers have good and bad experiences with guides, guiding clients on, on their fields. So. Um, it's one of those things in my area. Uh, if you're a guide, you, you better you better be tiptoeing. You know what I mean? Better be tiptoeing in them Jordans because I'm telling you right now, the farmer is gonna either go, okay, how much are you willing to pay me? Or he's gonna go, no. So uh, that's in my area. That's kind of how my area works is uh, I tell a lot of farmers that I am not a guide. So. If you have guides around in your area and you kind of have the same scenario, you know, so the farmers like some of the guides, the farmers don't like some of the guides. Again, it's just something I get out there right off the bat and uh, so they're not worried about it. It's something that you want to make sure they know, hey, we will not have uh, paying clients on this hunt. So even if you are a guide or if you do a little bit of guiding, just be upfront and honest if you have clients in that field. I'm telling you right now. But if you don't guide at all and you're just a normal, you know, everyday waterfowler like myself, the first time you tell them that I don't guide, that's what they expect. They expect no guiding on their field. A lot of you now that have been here on the channel, I've taught you how to scout, I've taught you how to get permission. I think this is the second video on how to get permission. I did one last summer. So I've taught you all of my tricks. You can go back and watch a lot of the old Foul Fridays, but we're going to be coming with some new Foul Fridays. So whatever videos that you guys want to see on the Foul Fridays, you have to leave a comment down below and let me know. But honestly, guys, you guys know where the birds like to be. You got the areas down, your local areas, you've got them down. You've got their roosts down. You've got their feeding grounds down in your areas. Get out there now. Get out there during summer before the farmers start getting bugged and pestered by everybody and their dog. 
Get out there now, pull out the Onyx maps, be like, oh yeah, well Jim owns that, that, and that. I want to lease all of Jim's stuff. Go out there, see if he'll give you, you know, first rights to it, or just simple permission over it for the next season. And if you have the jack, if you have the dough, and, and, the, and the property's good enough, lease it for yourself. Everybody has the ability to do that, you know, and farmers like some fuel money. So always offer it, you know, if, if always offer it if it's an option for you. If you want to lease something, be like, hey, what would it take to lease this from you? You know, but again, I know I babbled a lot. I mean, what else would this video be? Um, I guess it's better than standing in the backyard or sitting at a desk, just talking and rambling, right? It's all about confidence guys blowing your duck call in front of your buddies or in front of someone you don't know it's all about confidence talking to the farmer that you don't know and you're a little little uncomfortable to talk to him because you don't know him you don't know how he's going to react have confidence you can get anything done on this planet you can make anything happen you can be anybody with confidence you don't have to be the best you just have to have confidence in what you're doing and i'm and i'm telling you right now it'll happen but if you haven't guys, go down in the description at the top of it. I'm gonna put the Bobby Guy Films merch link. Came out with her own merch. There's some waterfowl designs getting ready to go up on there. But when you guys purchase any of the merch, you're automatically entered to win a two day hunt here in central Kansas with me, a waterfowl hunt this coming season. We're gonna draw the winner for that two day hunt, August 15th, 2019. So, but honestly, guys, thank you for all your video recommendations. I appreciate it so much. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we will see you on the next one. Peace.